Welcome to the Mark West Sports Podcast. I'm Marcus Benjamin. This is Wesley Pierre to mm-hmm. my left. And we give you that real sports talk from a Miami perspective. And today is a celebration because Always. it's Juneteenth. And Juneteenth is now a federal holiday. Yep. You know, I see you, you tell me you already reaping the benefits. Oh, yeah, are, definitely. Are, uh, of Juneteenth. <laughs> so congratulations. Um, it really is the day that we emancipated slavery and, you know, kind of broke the chains, so to speak. And it's been long overdue, to be honest. You know, Juneteenth should have been a federal holiday, I think. But finally, that happened. So uh, I'm happy that is uh, the situation now in America. Mm. Um, you know, everybody gets another day off, which is great. Always good. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't really erase anything that's going on in this country for Thank the you. years or anything like that uh, for the past, you know, hundreds of years. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's a step in the right direction. Just like when slavery was emancipated, that was a step in the right direction. Yeah, we still going know, through it. But we, we, we still... Sla- some uh, some people out here are still slaves. No, nah, yeah, I, I think everybody. I think I, I think all of us, even myself, yourself, and most of the people that I know, is still kind of slaves out here. But they're slaves mentally. There's a lot of stuff that you and I don't even know that we're slaves to right now. You feel me? And me and you are woke. You know, we know about a lot of different political topics. We know a lot of about you know stuff that's happening in the world but there's a lot of stuff that we don't know maybe when a few more years we'll wind up knowing about certain things that we don't know so i do feel like us we're still slaves you know to the system you know um because we don't know you know and you know when you don't know something then you you tend to um fall victim to what you don't know so um yeah today's june on juneteenth something that you know most black people didn't even know you know, of course, you know, Abraham Lincoln done signed, you know, um, that bill to free all the slaves. But of course, you know, um, every state wasn't following the rules and following right. directions. So, you know, it took, you know, um, Juneteenth, I think it was was the last day with, when, when, when Texas eventually officially acknowledged, you know, certain things that was passed. But it is what it is. Like Marcus said. Nothing ain't really changed. We're still talking about certain things. For me, I'll be thinking cynical. You know, I'm like, you know, of course, um, uh, we don't talk about politics too much. But sometimes when you got to talk about politics because that's important in our community. Yeah. I feel right now it can be a a um, a disguise. It could be a rouge. It could be something that you know, we were going to give to the, this community so they could forget about what's really happening in um, this country right now. So hopefully I'm wrong, yeah. you know, and hopefully this is not something that you're giving us, something that me and Marcus do agree and feel like um, should have been done long time ago and been an official government holiday long time ago. But again, I'm going to go ahead and see, but, um, uh, yeah, you I know, feel, I do I appreciate it, it though anyway. Yeah. I feel you on that because, um, as far as like, this could be like some kind of wool over the eyes type of thing to really kind of mask what's really going on okay. in, in the country, because to be honest, uh, integration to me, um, is something that you can say probably hurt black people more than helped. Yeah, I definitely agree you know, with that. Because if we didn't, if we did not have integration, then, you know, uh, HBCUs, for example, would have more funding and, you know, these black community communities would be able to basically keep the money in in house with black people. It wouldn't be like spread out. Yep. Have so, it in their own co- economy. I mean, in, in in hindsight, you look back at it that maybe it wasn't the right thing to do. But at the time, you're like, OK, well, yeah, we want to be on an even playing field with white people. So let's integrate schools and just integrate everything else. But yeah, uh, just just like we said, just keep keep your mind on what's what the real messages are, and what the real uh, goal is. And what yeah, exactly what the real goal is, and that's just to 
to really be free out here in the United States and not even the United States, but other countries too, there's racism everywhere. You know, um, of course, United States, I feel is, is behind other countries when it comes to racism, the melting pot. even behind Germany too, because Germany kind of started the whole world war too. But over there it's, it's like a totally different vibe than how it is over here when it comes to racism. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's that it's that good old boy network that is still working with the United States and America that, you know, want to keep the money with the money and want to separate uh, the the have nots, you know, away from the ones that have. Exactly. So, but anyways, it but is happy what it is. To everybody. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, we're going to go ahead and start this off on the Mark Westport Cup podcast. Um, I think the first topic we're going to jump into is, of course, Miami, Miami sports. We're going to jump into the Miami Dolphins real quick. Um, you see the logos um, right next to us. And um, definitely, I, I really do feel that the Miami Dolphins are headed in the right direction. But I yeah. do have a few problems with our team right now. I really have a problem with Xavier Howard, you know, um, actually coming out. And basically, like throwing sand in the organization's face by not showing up to me on um, training camp. It was mandatory. You know, we just signed you to a um, big deal. Um, I think last year. You know, and, and I do feel like when you do sign a contract, I think the contract was seventy-five million for five years. He didn't play the first year too much and not just that but i really i really you know my my i do tend to side with the players but today i'm not gonna side with the player right now because xavier howard they gave him that contract when he had that domestic violence um problem that miami found a way to you know sweep under the rug they also signed him when he didn't play uh too much in his rookie contract he missed like maybe like a year or two years Right. And, and, and when you do that in an organization, still vest a lot of that um, assets towards you. I feel like, you know, you have to have a little loyalty towards them also, because in a time when you were down in the time when certain organizations do turn their back on you, you see what they did to Ray Rice when, you know, of course, we do know that it was caught on video. But same thing, video, no video. If someone give me the, 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 the story, I'm going to be able to paint the picture in my head. Your your um girlfriend at the time, I think right now she's your wife. She actually said some quotes, you know, police police documentation saying how you was physically abusive to her. I don't know what really happened. I don't know if she said what she said because she was mad. I don't know. But again, sometimes people tell you the truth when they're mad. They tell you the truth when you're drunk. So she was sober at the time. She was mad at the time. She said, F the money. You know, you actually put hands on me, even though you were actually on crutches and and the Miami Dolphins still had your back now um I do understand the business side of things you know I think right now you're the fifth sixth um highest paid corner in the league but me personally I do feel that you need to stay loyal to a team that was loyal to you when um you were down and out you know when you was either injured or when you had that domestic violence um um charge that 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 not just it was uh, uh something that that people were just talking about. They really had physical evidence. They had pictures of your um, girl at the time. They had statements from her saying what she said that you actually did. And the Miami Dolphins and our organizations actually stuck with you. So for yeah, you to come out that. with four years left in your contract, not two uh-huh. years. Not three years. Yeah, I understand that. You know, like you- I really think it's a slap in the face. I hear you, but, like, at the same time, like, if I'm the player and this is my job and I'm considered one of the best cornerbacks in the league. Without a doubt. I should be paid like one. And, yeah, I did sign a contract, but that's why you can restructure contracts. You can restructure the contract for him to at least be the highest paid corner on his team. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, the the other corner on 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 the other end, is paid more than Xavier Howard. And I think he rightfully does deserve more money. Because I agree too. the NFL is, 
you don't know how long you're going to be in this league. Agreed. You had one of the best seasons. Uh, last, uh, Definitely the best season of your career last season as a cornerback. Mm-hmm. And you, uh, a lot of people think he's the best cornerback. I, And you, I think, also believe that yeah. he is the best he is. cornerback in he this is. league. And he's right now sixth. So I understand of you trying to get more money in this situation. Because I do too. Especially since you've been hurt before, like you alluded to. So you already know, like, hey, I could get hurt again. And then I won't get paid at all, like how I'm supposed to be paid. So I, I think in this situation, I understand trying to get more money. Now, holding out is maybe more of the uh, act that I would frown upon. Remember, availability is the best ability. Exactly, exactly. So I think holding out is something is, is something different. Like you, you, you're basically kind of holding the team hostage Thank a you. little bit when you, you know, rightfully, like I said, deserve deserve that money. But this, like Wes said, this team was loyal to you in, in situations Loyalty. of. Of 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 you know life changing situations, life changing situations. So yeah, I I don't think holding out is kind of the right thing to do at this moment. But I totally understand of him trying to get more money. And what's really happening is like he's telling his agent. He was like, "Yo, how am I the only the sixth uh, highest paid player?" And his agent was like, "Yo, he I'm pretty sure he went to to the GM of the Dolphins and was like, hey." We need to do something about his contract. And the GM was like, nah, we can't do nothing about his contract. And the agent was like, yo, all right, so my dog's going to hold out. What y'all going to do? We just signed. You know, so that's basically what happened. But we just signed you this to this uh, five-year contract. You only did one year. That wind up being the one year that you wind up doing your thing. I mean, uh, again, um, I think in 2018, you had seven interceptions that led the league, also made you a pro bowler, you know, this, that, and the other. I do understand that. But the market always go up every year. So every year, you're somebody that basically telling me that you're going to be complaining. You want to get – paid True. for the to be the highest corner every year even though every year the market's gonna go up and this year the market went down because of covid so the miami dolphins don't even have the money that they really need to give you that money remember we wind up having a lot of dead money on our plate getting rid of a whole lot of players you know and we wind up still doing what we needed to do to be probably in top five defense in the league um um Team that 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 only team I think in history to have a interception ever or takeaway every game in the season. So I'm really like, yo, you can't get mad that they gave Byron uh, um Byron Jones that money because that was the what the market gave um the Miami Dolphins at that particular time, and it was one year after they said that we f with you. Even though you injured, even though you're going through this domestic violence situation, we still going to pay you that bread because you came from Oregon and they vested a lot of uh, uh, assets towards you when you was down and out. So, like, and like, come on, man. The salary cap went down this year. How we, how you holding us hostage? If anything, Mike Zeki should be the one holding out because I think he's like third or fourth tied in um, getting paid. Mm. He's getting paid $2.6 million this year. And that's be behind Smite. That's behind uh, other few um, um tied ends that um that's on the Miami Dolphins. And that's crazy because I don't even know a lot of the other Miami Dolphins tied ends on the team. Yeah, I know Smite and I know Gasecki, and he's the one that's getting paid two point six million dollars. He should get paid a little bit more, but he showed up to um cap. Like again, like Marcus always say, availability is the best ability, See, and, I, and it don't matter if you're 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 injured. Or it don't matter if you holding out. You're not available to the team that that wind up sacrificing and investing a lot of money on Is you. Is Kasekia still on his rookie contract? I'm not sure. I'm not That's sure. That's probably if he's, why the situation is because Xavier Howard just got a new contract. He's not on a rookie contract no but more. But his his so, rookie contract, he was injured. Yeah, I understand that. But these players, they get. Uh, full of themselves once they get paid, you know, and Gasecki is still he's still kind of humble right now because he's still on his rookie contract, I believe. So that I think that's a reason why he's not holding out at this point, because he didn't officially get his big payday yet. But it's, Howard got his big payday. Exactly. So he's like, OK, well, I need to leverage this as much as I can 
to because what if I get hurt next season? What if you get hurt? You know, next season or the season after that? The NFL could just say, "Oh, nah, you, you're not getting that money." Or, or, I mean, the Dolphins could be like, "Nah, you're not getting that money because you weren't available." And you already know the best ability is availability. So, I mean, I think he has every right to like say, "Hey, y'all, y'all, y'all need to restructure my contract." Let's see how long this goes. I think he probably is just gonna hold out until training camp officially That's starts like in august and then i feel he'll he'll end up playing this year out just like how um jarvis landry did like he was supposed to get this big contract he and didn't. he didn't but he got the but contract. he played the year out and then they let him go but he has the contract we signed you to a five-year deal 75 78 million i think 29 million was guaranteed they gave you majority of the money up front like yo why are you complaining this year and for me because you know some six highest quarter see but some people gonna paid. go ahead and take shots at your 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 um 10 interceptions last last year we didn't have a decent training camp we always want to go ahead and give to that 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 little leeway saying that he was not able to have training camp he was not able to have a regular season this day and the other so we're gonna go ahead and give him the benefit of the doubt all right last year you had 10 interceptions without these corner on um, cornerbacks without these wide receivers without these uh, uh, um teams having what they normally have so you did benefit from that I ain't going to make it seem like, yeah, you would have had interceptions, but you did benefit. Some of them interceptions was because of training camp, because they didn't have that cohesiveness that they would normally have. Again, I do think that you're the best corner in the league. That's, I'm not knocking you, but I, I you probably would have had seven, just like you had in 2018. You probably had another three just because people was not on the same page when you actually played them. So you're over here doing what Bam Adebayo done went ahead and did to the Miami Dolphins, where I do feel like him, he stole money too because you've seen what he did in the playoffs. We gave him yeah. money after the bubble when we shouldn't have gave him money um, after the bubble. And we gave you money before the actual COVID, and you're over here complaining right now when you played in the bubble in the NFL, it was a bubble. Whatever they actually do, it's not the NBA bubble, but it was an NFL bubble, and you wind up benefiting. So now you're going to hold us hostage, and we done gave you the bread. We gave you five. You got four not, years that's, that's on your I contract. I, mean, oh, I, I feel you as a fan, but as a player, I feel him too. You know, like I totally understand what you're saying, uh, but I, I just feel him more so as a player because – if 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 he doesn't leverage his weight right now, he may not he may not have a great season like he did last season where he got and that uh, shows what as many interceptions as he has. You as a if, fan, if there's what's that? You as a fan. So if that happens, right? What would you say if we wind up giving him that bread now that he won because he's holding out, and then it shows that you know his game that went down. Aren't you gonna be mad that we pay him more that, money now? That always happens, though, man. Like if for you, the most part, like for the most part, when, when these players get money, they don't perform like how they did before. You know, for the most part, because they don't got that fire. Exactly, they don't. Have, they they earned it. It's like man, like if you made it, like right now, I'm more hungrier. You know, to really make it. Once I get there. I'm not going to be as hungry as I am right now. I feel you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, it's human so, nature. Like, oh, yeah, it's oh, human Mark, nature. Oh. But I totally feel you. From a fan's perspective, I totally feel you 100%. Um, but from a player's perspective, you know, and an agent's perspective, it's not. you got to get money. See, you got to get money in is, this league. My whole thing is on loyalty, man. If Marcus hollered at me and tell me this is the contract and this is what we're doing, don't get mad because now we're making more money. It's like if I pay you for a beat and I paid you like $500 for the beat, but then now I'm making millions and millions of dollars behind that beat and now you feel like i have to pay you more like the con the 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 the, the it was yeah, like you, i paid you already I like feel, why are you hating I like you on that but like yeah that, you do you, have to pay me f- more for another beat now no yeah for another beat another, for another beat, beat. But, but, but it's like another season you gotta pay me more now all right for another season all right so give all you an right. example boom you know um five beats marcus got a i, I paid marcus twenty thousand dollars for five beats Right, and Mark, the first beat that Marcus gave me, them blue, them blue. Mm-hmm. So you're telling me that, yeah, Wes, I got the other four beats over here, but you got to give me a hundred, hundred bands for this beat. 
these beats right now. When you told me that it was twenty thousand dollars for all five beats, I'm gonna be feeling some type of way. Like, yo, like why are you watching my like yo, I'm helping you. You feel what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. You I, can't do me like that. I, like I feel you. Like in a situation like that, I keep it one hundred with you, but at the same time I'm be like, you know, I'm giving you a discount. Yeah, yeah, you giving me a discount. <laughs> so again, my, my whole thing is like a contract is the contract. You go ahead and do the contract. You know, it's just like when you would uh, uh with, with your significant other being married is a contract. You yeah. know, you know, she expect me not to cheat. She expect me to do what I need to do, and I expect the same thing from her. You know, and then now all of a sudden that 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 we get married now. It, it, it's just like we get married now. Now you're a different per- different person. You know how everybody be like, oh, when she get married or when he changed or she changed. Like yeah. no, like you feel me? Like you tripping? You gotta be that same individual. Don't be mad when I wanna what part ways with you. So again, Xavier Howard, don't be mad if they part way with you. You know, I think that you one of the greatest corners in the game right now, but. I seen that coming. You remember when I brought this up on our lab on one of our not not the last podcast, but the podcast like probably in October, November, when we were still in the playoffs, and I told you he signed that new uh, um, agent, and that agent is already talking about Brad, and then now you seen in this off season, then we got one of the twins, one of the twins, the McCordy brothers from the Patriots. Yeah. We wind up getting him. Why you think they got him? They and why you think they got uh, uh, um, Igby um, Agony? You feel me? Because they knew. That something like this was gonna happen. People gonna go ahead and pocket watch, and you seem like your agent or yourself is pocket watching. And yeah. now you hating. You can't get mad at the other dude because he's, he's probably gonna say, "Oh, I got ten interceptions." But damn, that's crazy. Like, it's funny how nobody wanna so uh, uh, um um throw on um, Byron Jones Jones side. Yeah, I mean. So you go, you go. It's, it's just like Revis. Kind of you have Revis Island. Nobody want to throw on Revis side, right. but you get paid less because yeah, they 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 trying Marcus on his side because I'm Revis, right. you know, and, and, and Marcus is whoever I'm Revis. Uh, I think Cromarty. Marcus is Cromarty, and I'm Revis. But they know the the island, or or you can change it. You know, Marcus is Revis, and I'm Cromarty, and they giving me the business, but I'm over here picking your ass every time you try me. They don't right. want to try Marcus. Because everybody know and giving him that hype, and of yeah. course he's a great player. Now you getting mad at me because I got ten million? Look, yeah, I, I feel you. On, I feel you. I feel you. I mean, I mean, we both feel kind of differently on this situation, but at that, at the same time, we we feel the same on the situation. Um, but also in the news was Tua. You know, Tua actually had a, a good practice and he wasn't really getting a lot of uh praise for the, for the good practice but you the bad the practice he had where it was like five interceptions that he threw with the hurricane outside yeah with a monsoon outside <laughs> if you live in south florida you already know how's it how it's been this week it's been raining every day and that's how the summer is hurricane season oh my it's, it's, it's what we live in but uh yeah so to a I feel this offense is going to take off, though. Me too. I really feel like Tua is really going to show why he was picked as highly as he was in that draft mm-hmm. because now he is comfortable. He's, he's got playmakers, and he admitted that he didn't really know the playbook last year, so that means that what that really is telling you is that this year he knows the playbook. Because yeah, he wouldn't have said, yo, I didn't know it, if you didn't realize the depth in which you needed to know this playbook. So I really think him, Fuller, um, Wilson, um, Park, Devontae Parker, Hearns, all about um, Preston Williams, mm-hmm. just these players, and Gasecki, who you mentioned earlier, and um, – Smite. And um, Smite, Smythe we, as well. He does his thing with the blocking. And then we got, you know, a couple of those young running backs back there, which, you know, running backs are, you know, kind of a dime to a dozen. So we'll see how healthy these guys are. We got the guy from Malcolm Brown from the Rams. Mm-hmm. You know, we still got uh dude from last year. Um, Ahmed. 
Ga- uh, Miles Gaskin. Miles Gaskin and Ahmed. And Ahmed. And you got the new rookie that came in, uh, Dokes, I think is his yep, name from Cincinnati. Yep. Mm-hmm. So you got a squad that can score points. So I don't want to see any excuses about them not scoring points next season. They They need to put up big points in a hurry because they have everything they need to, yeah. you know, make a big run next season. Yeah, definitely. Like, you know, going back to what you were saying, you know, Tua, you know, it's just going back to what I've, we've been saying on the Mark Westport podcast. They hate us because of our weather. They hate us because of our beaches. They hate us because of our women. We have a hurricane, practically a hurricane outside while they're in training camp, you know, and, and, and everybody's going ballistic and crazy on ESPN and all these social media sites, you know, like, damn, can you throw a ball in a hurricane? Can you throw a ball d- during a tornado, during a monsoon, d- during heavy rain, you know? And, again, like Marcus said, like, Miami, we know what it is, you know. And I'm happy that it's happening right now because, again, where do you want him to learn? You want him to learn and go through these ups and downs during training camp. You don't want him doing that in and practicing, practicing these things during the real live game. No. This is where you learn, like. Don't do that, you know, and again, you know, after everybody in all the media swirling around to uh, if he's able to do his thing, you know, everybody already know what it's going to be. You know, everybody's going to go ahead and tune in to Miami Dolphins football the same way they did when LeBron James was here. He's our LeBron James, but just in football, you know. So, again, when it comes to the Miami Dolphins and that actual uh, – to a situation i think that his second practice was great uh he 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 did his thing but again like mark has alluded to they really didn't talk about that on espn and we don't care we don't want them to talk about the miami dolphins we want everybody they, to be surprised when shit like are, this happened they they are talking about the miami dolphins though like they talk about the dolphins a lot they they've like, I haven't seen this much off-season co- coverage of the Dolphins in a long time, you like know. I said, he's the LeBron because, of Miami. You know, that we had two great drafts in a row, and we get, we got Will Fuller, who's supposed to be a big playmaker. And exactly. And then we got Jalen Phillips, who's, who's supposed to add to that defensive line. They also signed Jerome Baker to a long-term deal. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, 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 a definitely. Linebacker. A three-year um, deal. They, they signed him to a long-term deal, which I like because he was like the only young linebacker that was really consistent since he's been on the team. So I, I kind of – Ahmed. Not Ahmed, but it, um, it, it being – not Ahmed, no, the, the guy that came from Cleveland, a DN or D-tackle, um, you know, he, he – I forgot his name. He's, it's, a, it's an African name. He'll okay. come back to me, but, but – Yeah, I think I know who you're talking about. He's 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 on the D-line. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, he was de- he's definitely been consistent as well. So, yeah, the future's bright for the Miami Dolphins. Yes, yes. Uh, anything else on the Dolphins you wanted to add? I mean, only thing is that, you know, we, we moved from Davie, and now that we're, our training facility is now at Dolphin Stadium, you know, um, we wind up building – a beautiful stadium so when you want to come down to miami go to miami dolphin stadium hard rock stadium you know we always have these different names for miami but yeah. miami know what Still it is joe for robbie. me it's joe robbie <laughs> 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 but but but, but yeah you're able to go over there um if, if somebody like me or marcus have an acl chair we um tear we can definitely go over there and and be able to be treated over there, the same doctors that treat the players can treat us, the public, which is always a good thing, you know. And, and, and I, I seen this the other day. That That is definitely dope because you got to understand, like, people are scared of surgery. I'm scared of surgery. But if I know that somebody is having surgery on me that just has surgery on Tua yeah. or just has surgery <laughs> on Xavier and Howard, like, I, when they put that little – thing on my nose so I could go ahead and fall asleep I'm falling asleep like a baby you know I don't have no no nothing to complain about because I know I'm in the right hand so just the plain fact that the Miami Dolphins done went ahead and transitioned to training cap in Davie where they had no shade and you dying in the Miami heat now you're back at Miami Dolphin Stadium you know Stephen um, Ross um done did his thing and you got shade it looks like kind of like somebody's going to bring you food it looks like something like that like some um high class um uh, worldly um thing and, and and I really do appreciate that because our owner you know he wind up spending his bread when the Miami um 
congressmen didn't want to give him that money to 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 um uplift the stadium so so that's always a good thing of course you know we had the mayweather fight at um Hard Rock Stadium, Dolphin Stadium, Joe Roddy Stadium, Sun Life Stadium. We had it over there. Land Shark Stadium. Land Shark Stadium. Pro yeah, that, Player Park. That, pro Player Park. <laughs> See, but Land Shark was good though. You don't like the name of Land Shark? I like I like all the names, to be honest. To be the beer honest, was, <laughs> beer was okay. I thought about my my name for the Dolphin Stadium. It, 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 I ain't never said it on air. It was Alcatraz Stadium. Alcatraz Stadium. <laughs> Alcatraz Stadium <laughs> would have been so lovely because we're surrounded by water. You True. know, and, 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 and it, it just would have been like you come to Miami, you come to the stadium, stadium, but do you you do not leave alive, or you do not leave with a win. So you know, hopefully they would have wound up doing that. But again, we do know the condemnations when you talk about Alcatraz, and, and I don't think they would have did that. But Alcatraz Stadium do have a ring to it. I do like um, Hard Rock Stadium also, but 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 I do. Feel like the Miami Dolphins are in the right direction. They got their quarterback supposedly right now. We're wind up seeing um, that he can do his thing in normal weather. Mm. So hopefully this can continue. Hopefully that trend can continue. Hopefully Xavier Howard can come back to training camp. We could have our dynamic duo at cornerback, just like Pastor Tain and Sam Madison. Yeah, and, and we're headed in the right direction. Hopefully, absolutely. Uh, obviously, the NBA is going to be a topic of conversation of for us because you know we're in the midst of the NBA playoffs. Yes, and I was actually thinking that the NBA was like boring. But it seemed like it just got exciting within this past week because yep. we got uh, two game sevens that will happen. Mm -hmm. uh, we got Brooklyn and, and Milwaukee going to a game seven. Mm -hmm. We also have Atlanta and Philly also going to a game seven, which I'm kind of surprised that I wasn't I wasn't really expecting Atlanta to push it to a game seven. They actually had a chance to close it out last night, but they failed to do so. So that's going to a game seven. So, I mean, there's a bunch of NBA topics that kind of came to mind for me this week. Okay. But for one, KD had this ridiculous game where he dropped 49. <laughs> Should have dropped 50, but he just missed a free throw at the end. It's all good. Um, And I think he had, what, like I think 12, he had, like, 12, 12 or 13, 13 or, assists. And, like, I think, like, was it a triple-double? It was close to triple-double, but, but it wasn't. But it was – I think he may have had eight uh, rebounds or something like that. Okay. But um, KD shows, again, just how great he is, though. Uh, Kevin Durant, one of the best players, shooters, I think one of the best shooters in this league of all time. I, I put him in the class. There's only three shooters that I put as the greatest of all time. Hold it's that. Kevin Durant, Steph, and Larry Bird. Those are my three best shooters of all time. And Kevin Durant... Obviously, yeah, he's won a championship, but he had to break away from the Warriors because he wanted to show that he could really start something on his own. But he really kind of started a super team on his own with Kyrie and James Harden. So now everybody is really thinking, like, okay, is he really the best player in the league right now? Because he basically beat a Milwaukee Bucks team by himself. Of course. You know, he just kind of did it by himself because he is one of the best shot makers of all time. And he was making crazy shots under duress. And he has, has been that caliber player for a long time. LeBron obviously is on the decline, I would say. And Giannis obviously shouldn't be in spoken in the same breath as a KD. Of course not. That leaves you with what players left. You got Kawhi, who unfortunately also this week suffered an ACL injury and is out for the rest of the season. That's disappointing news for any NBA fan because you just kind of want to see Kawhi play at least, have your superstars play. Um, so Kawhi, to me, I think is a player that you could say is in the contention of the best player in the league right now. But other than him, who would you say is, is a better player than Kevin Durant? Hmm. Better player than Kevin Durant. Some people may say Booker. Some people may nah, say. No, I wouldn't say that. 
I'm just saying, not not <laughs> not you. Some people, because I'm just saying, certain people in the actual league. Some people go ahead and say Zion because of the hype. Mm-mm. I don't think so. Some people say Steph Curry, but I think Steph Curry is KD, just seven feet. Just being real, yeah. you know. Um, when it comes to Giannis, Giannis is a great player, but Giannis doesn't have that shot. If Giannis have a, had a shot like KD, he would probably be the greatest player in history. Yeah. Just, 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 just being real, you know, because he have the agility, he has the athleticism, you know, he has the, 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 he has that personality. You can't really hate on Giannis. Yeah, you can't. You know, you can't. You know, you can hate on his game because he can't shoot. Yeah, but. You, you can hate on his <laughs> game. You know, the guy doesn't want to shoot free throws. He's kind of someone like Ben Simmons, someone scared of the moment at a particular time because he don't want to go to the free throw line because he's not consistent. Yeah, but KD like. KD is the truth. My only thing with him is he is not as physical that as I want him to be because he's skin and bones. He got the shot. He has the agility. He don't. He doesn't have the same agility as Giannis, and they built basically the same. Both of them seven foot. One can shoot. One cannot. One can go to the – both of them can go to the rim, but one can go and, – and Giannis is not even that much physical also, but Giannis has – more to his game. If if KD did the things that Giannis would do, I would be like, he's the greatest um, player right now in the NBA. I would really have to sit down and think about it. If he, I feel he's better than um, um, Jordan or Larry Bird or one of these players. You know, that's something that you really have to sit down and think about. It can't be like something like Marcus just asked me, asked me right now. Oh, who do you think is the greatest of all time? Like, I won't be able to give him that answer because. I don't. I want to really MJ. think about everybody. Everybody knows MJ. You know, <laughs> everybody. Everybody knows MJ. Everybody knows Kobe. Everybody knows LeBron. But you have to really sit down and think about everything, di- every different aspects to the game, all the pros and the cons. You know, to their game before you actually come up with an official uh, reason why this person is your greatest player of all time. But KD, he has that shot. He's been doing his thing. He had that. Almost triple double against Milwaukee Bucks, but Milwaukee Bucks are losing because they don't want to go in the paint. You seen the last game they just won because they went in the paint. The paint, the the game that they won previously to this one, they was going in the paint. Yeah, we know that. Right now, your team was, I think, number one with three point shots in the league. But you know what they say: you live or um, live by the shot and die by the shot. And I do understand that, but when your greatest player can't can't shoot the ball, free throw or mid range or three point, then you know I, I think that you're doomed to actually fail. Now KD, I do think that he's a, a, a one of the best players in the game right now, but I don't think he's the greatest player right now. I still think even so though like you what you're saying, so who do you think is better than um, KD? LeBron is still better than KD. No, because LeBron don't think so. is still more physical than KD. You right seen now? what you, you do? Do you think that's that that what's his name Porter, or what's his name the one that was guarding KD can muscle LeBron like that? Hell no. Nah. It's not happening. But LeBron shot. I think it, it doesn't it, matter. He's gonna make, go to the free throw makes line. Him more detrimental to He's me. He's going to go to the free throw line. I I'd think, rather have Kevin Durant right now than LeBron James, to be honest. See, if you're talking about right now, you know, yeah, all right, right now, that's what I mean. I I would rather have LeBron James, okay. and I don't like LeBron. Again, this is team LeBron. Hey, Germany already scored you know, for five minutes. But but I I really do feel like LeBron James really can change a basketball team. And I think um, KD can change a basketball team to a certain extent. LeBron James can make it to the finals by himself with trash. The only reason why he didn't make it to the finals is because they gave KD all that money and more people could have been also on the bench, but they're not there because of AD in that contract. Check out this goal, yeah. though. Well, man. Uh, Germany, oh, Germany, crazy. Germany uh, but, but they'll, they'll replay it. So Germany just scored on Portugal. You know, I think that's the Watching team the that's um, over here. Ronaldo is pl- um, playing on. Yeah, Ronaldo's on. You got Portugal. five minutes and twenty one um um seconds left in basically the first half. No, it's uh, five into minutes, the game. Yeah, just, into the game yeah, yeah. or left. Yeah, into the game. 
and, 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 and you know, it was a crazy shot. You know, I didn't get to see it. Uh, it was off size, though. Oh, see? Off Damn. size. The, the same thing that we were basically talking about when they, when they was teaching me last year on the <laughs> actual couch <laughs> about off sides. You see what I'm saying? That's why I be hating uh, um, be right soccer, back. you know. But, but, again, regardless of the fact, I really do feel like um, when it comes to – LeBron James, he's a better player than KD because he has a better IQ than KD. He doesn't have a better shot, but it's just like Shaq. When it comes to that moment, Shaq don't know how to shoot free throws, but when it comes to that moment, he's going to make it. And I hate LeBron. Well, let me not say hate because hate is a strong word. Um, I really dislike what LeBron did to Miami. That's the only thing that I hate about LeBron. But other than that, everything else about LeBron, I really do like. You know, I like um, that that he's a mogul when it comes to um, um, certain things. He speak on politics. He speak. He he has his own production company. Oh, yeah. he, he owns you know? all his own. Shit. He owns everything that he is in his name. So how can you knock a brother like that? You know, I'm black just like him, and it's Juneteenth. So why would I hate on LeBron, especially on this day? You know, so so. Um, I really do K- feel like KD, he's doing his thing. But I still think that people is not going to re- respect his championship if he wins the championship this year compared to LeBron. And you know everybody loves to hate LeBron. I'm one of them. I really think they'll respect LeBron James' championships more than KD because with LeBron when coming into Miami, um, he – Everyone, everyone was free agents. You know, um, they did their thing. You know, they had their run. But when it comes to Kyrie and and um, KD and 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 um, James Harden, Harden basically held his team hostage, just like um, I was saying with Xavier Howard. So it didn't form the same way. It didn't have that chemistry the same way. You know, those personalities did bump. Again, we'll definitely jump jump into that in a second. But it's just for me, I really do feel like LeBron James gives me more, even though KD has a better shot. And and, and yeah. that's not a question. No, nah, nah, nah. That is not a question at all. Free throw, three-point, mid-range, it doesn't matter. But in a league where you know that it's physical, and it's not as physical as it was in the 90s, but it's still physical. LeBron James has the edge. You know who doesn't have a shot, though? Giannis. Besides Giannis, is Ben Simmons, bro. Oh, my God. Ben Simmons, bro, like, is just, he's just an investment that Philly is going to regret for the next few years. The fact that you gave this dude a max contract which means he's making, you know, uh, 30, 40,000, uh, 40 million, sorry, uh, a year is really going to cripple this franchise because not only can he not shoot, but he's not even willing to shoot. Like, in the big moment, he just doesn't even show up. Like, he is the legitimate number two player on this team behind Embiid, and... He's giving you basically nothing as far as scoring is concerned. He gives you defense. He gives you hustle. But he doesn't score the basketball like he's supposed to. And to me, he is a player that Philly is going to regret just paying because nobody's going to want him at the same time. Like, no team is going to be like, okay, yeah, I, I, I will trade some of my ass, assets for a Ben Simmons because we have eyes. We see what's going on. We see the fact that Ben Simmons is, is, is shrinking in the big moment in these playoffs. And the fact that you know that you can't shoot. And you've been in the league, I want to say, three, four years now. And you still haven't developed a shot. A consistent shot. I, we all know Giannis can't shoot. But Giannis, the thing about Giannis, he's not afraid to take that shot, which is, which is detrimental to his team. But at least he's not afraid to even take the shot. Ben Simmons is afraid to even take a shot in the big moment. Like, 
you are LeBron. You're like a poor, a very, very, very poor man's LeBron James. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you can basically do everything on the court. You can defend. You can rebound. You can do assists um, on a consistent basis. But in the big moment, you shrink and you can't shoot. Like for for. For for you to be in this league, being paid as much as you can, if I'm the GM of Philly, this is a slap in the face to me. Yeah, because I, I paid you all this money, and you're not even working on your jump shot, bro. You're not even working your, on your jump shot. And in the big moments, you're not even taking it because you know it's garbage. You know? You know it's not going in. So you're not even taking it. You're passing it off every time. Like Ben Simmons is to me, I think is going to end up being one of the worst contract decisions in NBA history. Uh, I definitely agree with that, but I still would want him on my team. You would Just, trade though for I him. I wouldn't. I wouldn't trade for him. You exactly. Know, not especially not that big contract that they done gave right. him. Right. So he's but, stuck. But 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 ultimately, for me, when it comes to Ben Simmons, I think the only reason why he had the accolades and the looks that people are giving him is because he's a point guard and he's as big as he is he looks like he should be like a small forward yeah. playing point guard or you know or or even a i wouldn't say power forward because he don't have that girth to his body you know but but he does have um you know some type of games he goes to the rim but again if you had a uh, uh, if you was good at the free throw then you know you can definitely still be in a the game they take you out of the game and put you back in and with with a two minutes left because they know it's not gonna be hack a shack no more. Because they'll just foul you and, you know, take you to the line and know that you're gonna brick one or two of them ninety yeah. percent of the time. So as far as Ben Simmons, I wouldn't call him a bust yet because he still has some aspects to his game. All he needed to really do is like learn how to shoot free throws. And just a jump shot, at least. Yeah, you can have a jump shot, but I know a, a lot of players that didn't have a jump shot, and I don't know a lot of point guards that ha- didn't have a um, jump exactly. shot. But but you know, I know a lot of players that didn't have a consistent jump shot. But they they were the troop when it came to um, the free throw. Hopefully, he can go ahead and switch that up. But you know, it, it goes back to what Jimmy Butler was saying. You know, he didn't have a great relationship with. Ben Simmons, of course, everybody know that MB doesn't have the greatest relationship with Ben Simmons. So, uh, I mean, if if they could find a way to get Ben Embiid over here, I wouldn't mind. If they could find a way to get Kawhi over here, I wouldn't mind. If they would find a way to get certain players over here to help Jimmy Butler, I wouldn't mind. But going back to the playoffs, I'm looking at the Philadelphia 76ers and – even if they do make it to the next round, I know KD and them boys going to go ahead and give them the business. We do know that Harden is not himself. Like, just the other day, they had a fast break. He had a fast break. He stole the ball, and he didn't want to re-injure himself, so he kind of slowed down Yeah, and and let the rest of the, the team move forward so he could go ahead and pass the ball. So we do know that they're limping. They don't have Kyrie. You know, Uncle Drew, and they don't have James Harden. Someone that I feel was trash in the playoffs anyway, you know. So it was Christian Ronaldo. Ronaldo just went ahead and did his thing. It was kind of an easy tap-in, but still. It don't matter. <laughs> I feel like it that was offsides too. But. Probably. <laughs> but you, it, it probably was offsides, but they, they're not going to call it on him. Let's see what they oh, say. They I see the referee. They they review it. Right That's what I'm saying. It looked like offsides when you watch. Look, check this out. Hold on, let's see. It looked like he was outside. So explain this, Marcus. Like, as soon as he hits this, that to be this pass, he – oh, that's he, close. That's he's really, already really pa- close. Yeah, that's really that's close. close. It's close. It's close. It's close. Oh, that's that close, beautiful. man. I, and usually when it's close, they call it offside. Ah, oh, fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask y'all about, uh, I know we were talking about, like, trades and uh, LeBron. So, I saw Dame Lillard on his Instagram Live, and LeBron was on there. And, you know, so he's talking, so he's uh, 
texting with LeBron. He's like, yo, LeBron, make that call. T- tell him to make that decision. And then, and then he, LeBron jumps on his live, and they just they, – they're chilling. They're talking. So it kind of looks like Dame Lillard is – trying to go oh yeah to, Dame to Lillard latest. like th- th- this is something that we were kind of talking about how long do you stay loyal to a team yeah you know I think that was our last podcast because you know Dame Lillard was saying like how long do you stay some loyal to whatever something like that you know it is what it is I, I just hate that it's LeBron James that's getting that call from Damon Lillard because it'll be crazy to see AD LeBron James and Dame Lillard, yeah, that's Dame Dollar, you know, someone that went after Shaq, even made some 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 raps about Shaq, and you see how Shaq done kind of shut shut the hell up, you know, because yeah. Dame bodied him in both of them tracks that he made, and, and, and he's you know a lot of times when you have athletes speaking or 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 making rap songs is garbage. He he actually can rap, but going back to the actual topic, it. it NBA fined his ass twenty five thousand dollars the same way you did Pat Riley, because that's tampering. Like, what are you doing over here? Like, like, come on, man, damn, literally, like, come to Miami Heat. You know, we do not want to see you over there with LeBron. You know, because you know LeBron's gonna go ahead and have you fall. He, you gonna want be the one that fall on that sword. It's not gonna be LeBron. LeBron James gonna always find a way to deflect. Right now, it's AD. It's AD's fault they didn't go to the next on uh, championship. You know, uh, when you come, I do want you to have a ring, though. That's the only thing, man. I f with you, man. Like I like your game, I like your personality, I like your rapping skills, everything about you. I like your loyalty too. But again, like you said, how long can you stay loyal to somebody yeah. that's not loyal to you? They didn't give you somebody that's that was a real um, number two, and you know they gave you a Carmelo Anthony Anthony that's filing for dis- divorce, and you know when your wife is filing for divorce, you know your get- your 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 head is not in the game. When she seen Tommy in in in, in 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 um that Fifty Cent show Power, you know looking like she's smashing that dude in real life, like that's not gonna that's gonna take you out the game. <laughs> I'm like if if I see my, you know like come on, it's gonna take me out the game. So. When I look at that situation, like Damon Lillard, like, please don't do it. Say it's not so. You know, you could go to any other team. Please don't go to the Lakers. Because, yeah. like, you want, you, want, you want people to really um, salute your championship when you win. Because if KD win right now, you think they care if KD win? They're going to say because he done concocted this, this team and this, that, and the other. They're not saying that about Miami. When Miami had LeBron James in the big three, yeah, they're not they saying were. that about. Yeah, they not, do. They nah, do not really. Not, not the same way. They don't like that he came to Miami, but they don't. They're not saying that it was like concocted like KD. They're giving KD a lot more hate. I'm just being real. Nah. <laughs> you don't think they nah. gave KD a little nah, more Nah, they hate? gave LeBron a lot of hate. This, yeah. this was like the most hated team you could say in NBA history, aside from the bad boy Pistons. But you can't say that you know, because they like, always hate the Miami Heat. Yeah, but but they was hating on LeBron for, like, coming, come, especially the way that he did it. Yeah, that started and, with LeBron. But they still you know, hate And then that whole, that whole uh, pep rally and stuff like that. The Miami like Heat that. hate started with, with, with that pep rally. See, but, yeah. again, they still hate Miami to this day. I think and they LeBron hate. And LeBron is gone. So, like, yo, like, they hated, they hated Miami when we got Shaq. They hated us when we got LeBron. They just hate Miami. Like, come on, man. You know what it is. The That's weather, the beaches, the the, <laughs> the 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 women. Like, come on, man. We're not in no drought right now. We're in the east. We over here got – we're not in no drought. You go out west, Arizona, Utah not, – not Utah, Arizona and, and California in certain places – they're, yeah. they're, they're facing the drought right they now. They hate us because of that. We got more water now. Yeah, now they're hating us because of that now. Of course, but they, I don't think they hated Brooklyn as much as they did the Miami Heat in those days. Because remember, it was the whole LeBron saying not one, not two, not three, not four, not five. That people was like, oh, he's not okay, six, so not seven. Think, y'all got just going to run shop for like five, six, seven years. Nah, so Brooklyn obviously did, did not do that. And then Harden came in kind of late. In the game, you know, he wasn't like formed all at the same time as, as the Heat were. It's, it's definitely not as much hate, but I definitely hate him personally. I hate the Brooklyn Nets right now because, and I don't want to see them win because they're they're pretty much a super team. I'm, it's like it's almost a blessing that 
I wouldn't say it's a blessing that people got hurt, <laughs> but you know that's their livelihood or whatnot. But it, I guess it's a blessing for the NBA fan that wants to see a little bit more balance in the NBA. Hey man, the fact that you got James Harden hurt and Kyrie matter. also got hurt. It I think matter. Kyrie's injury is probably a little bit worse than people they letting cheated. on. That was a I think it's though. more of a high ankle sprain. Do you think it was intentional or unintentional? Nah, I don't think it was intentional. I think it was intentional. I don't think it's intentional. I at think all. it he was intentional. And, and like his, nah, his man. Foot was under him. Nah. Like Giannis, man, you seen you seen what was going on. You made sure that you was where you was at. That, that's just my opinion, and, and, and that's not my team. So. so I seen it a few times. I rewinded like a few times before I came up with that conclusion because I do know. Giannis, I'm not going to put him in one of them categories as a bad player. It's just like when Dwayne Wade broke Rondo, Ron, Rajon Rondo's arm. That was intentional, even though, like, like in the playoffs, like, you can't tell me that Wade didn't do that intentional. He broke Rondo's arm intentionally, you know. So when I look at that that play with Giannis, like, he made sure that his, his foot was there like Zaza Pachulia, you know. You mm-hmm. made sure that your foot was there like, come on, man. You didn't have no chance of even rebounding in the ball you shouldn't even must be there so 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 for me it is just like hey it is what it is um again i i really do feel like um kd um team is hated more because they everyone hates kd and everyone hates Kyrie. yeah I, 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 a lot of people don't hate Dwayne wade a lot of people don't hate chris bosh they only hated lebron so I think the hate is I a little bit the more, Miami and then you gotta as understand a whole. they're up north. They're in like the mecca, Brooklyn, New York. That's the mecca of basketball. Miami's not the mecca of basketball. Let me let me ask Marcus. So what do you think about if Dame Lillard goes to the Lakers? I mean, it's a Gee. nightmare. It's a nightmare. Uh, it's a nightmare for everybody else who is not a Laker fan, to be honest, because. You have a, a LeBron who doesn't have to control the offense no more. You got Damian Lillard coming down the court who can just bang it from from half court if he wants to. And then you got LeBron, like when Dame is tied, he just gives it off to LeBron. LeBron co- controls the offense. And then you got AD running around on the inside, getting rebounds. And, you know, you throwing him alley-oops. They could all throw alley-oops to each other. Just those three players alone, to me, is a, is a better combination than the Brooklyn Nets or any other team in the NBA. And I hope it doesn't happen. I love Dame, and I don't want to have a reason to hate him, you know? I mean, I, I love him because of everything that Wes was talking about. You know, he seems like a real dude. I like him as a rapper. His loyalty to this team for all these years. Yeah, but... After a while, you got to be like, hey, I mean, I've been loyal for all this time, and now my legacy check. is hurting. People are not going to be like, I'm one of the best point guards of all time because I don't I don't think they've made it to a Western Conference Finals ever. Nope. So at some point, you got to be like, okay, well, my legacy is on the line, so I have to make a move. Unfortunately... He's talking to LeBron and the Lakers, and hopefully that doesn't come to fruition. Yeah, hopefully not. You know, same thing for me. Like, I got that same opinion. I, me, I'm kind of tired of seeing these damn super teams, you know, especially if it's not organic, if you didn't draft the player. Like, you know, they drafted Steph. They drafted Clay. Did they draft? Yeah, they drafted Draymond. Yeah. You know? So it, 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 it was different. It was formed organically. Whereas, you know, the Miami Heat, we did it, but we did it in free agency. We only agency. drafted Wade. Huh? We, we drafted only drafted Wade. Wade. We drafted Wade, and LeBron James and, and Chris Boss was free agents, and we had the money at that time to go ahead and pay him. So I don't really feel no smite behind that. But KD with Kyrie, it was not no smite also. It's just when you wind up having James Harden holding out and holding that team hostage to trade him, then now that that's the only only problem I have with that team. But again, if Dame Lillard go to the Lakers, like it's gonna make me a little mad. It's gonna, well, it's it's gonna make me, me big mad. mad. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna make me big. You mad. know, I'm gonna be like, yo, like what's going on? And it made me feel some type of way for when Chris Paul was headed to the Lakers years back with Kobe and and Dwight Howard, the league commissioner. Stop that. That was the first time I ever seen that in my life in sports that 
the commissioner it's a legal trade you're a free agent or you or it's a legal trade and and the team stop it yeah. you know so so for me um i look at it and i look at it to the point where the commissioner where you at yo you're not gonna stop this from keep happening you're gonna have these these players just demand trades like that to go where they want to go and you're not gonna do anything about it like yeah, again they, they it gets Paul annoying Green for sure you know because i'm like people was annoyed at the lebron james era with the miami heat and that was done now we got uh the the then we had the golden state era with with the big big four and then we go ahead and gonna go into the ad era with lebron lebron don't even need a third player all he needs is a decent uh uh uh, uh another number one and he had that with ad be hot beside when he got injured and now we got brooklyn like come on i'm tired of seeing that like I'm, i want to see like teams that if you're organically built great then cool and i i i really feel like the 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 league is 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 getting younger when i feel like the better basketball comes when they're older you don't think so uh, I'd say the more and more intelligent ball comes when they're older, yeah. yeah just I, like Chris Paul right now. You know, so for me, I, you know, I, I just feel like the league is headed in the wrong direction. Some people going to be like, shut the hell up, Wes. You had LeBron James in Miami. But I'm like, how long yeah. we're going to keep going <laughs> through this same process? Again, like I said, we got them in free agency. If you got the bread in free agency to get LeBron, AD, Lillard, or whatever like that, cool. But – to, to, to hold teams hostage, to formulate these 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 plans and people not getting uh, uh, fined, like tampering, like Pat Riley, the godfather, is getting. It just feel make me feel like it, it, it's, it, it's really unfortunate and, and the league is heading in the wrong direction. Let, let me ask you this, though. Um, you know, you got Trey Young that is moving on to a game seven right now, and he's been playing out of this world. Um these playoffs and then you also got Luca who is arguably one of the best young player or if or the best young player hmm. in the league right now hmm. uh, who would you rather take Trey Young or Luka Doncic I'll trade I'll I'll take Trey Young because I I think he I think that he has a better game than Luka I think Luca. The advantage that Luca has that other players don't have is that he was a professional basketball player in his country, Europe or whatever where it was at, and he was around older guys. He was around that brotherhood. He knows what it really means to 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 play um that sport in a high level, even though it wasn't the NBA. So when I see him the last two years right now doing his thing like yeah i agree you doing your thing but you should already be better than trey young you should be better than um certain players um the, the um that that play your position because you've been doing this for like the last six years maybe five six years and and, and um i think that's something that our young players are lacking because sometimes it's one and done in 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 um um college basketball you know, they made that stupid rule. Of course, I think they changing it back. Like, if you could come from high school, then cool. But but I yeah. really I really think that Luca. the only reason why Luca is, some people will say that he's better is because, one, he's white. Two, I don't think that he's a better player because he's not as consistent at the free throw line. And someone that I feel like being in European basketball, your shot should be. At, especially at the free throw line should be a little bit more consistent than what it is now. Same thing with the three point line. But I, your overall game is great. But again, it's just like you're a better Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons is someone that's a certain built, someone I feel is a small forward that's playing point guard. You can easily be a shooting guard or a small forward, Luca, because you got that 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 weight to you. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure is. You know, if he had that same weight in his rookie year, because uh, I don't remember him being that heavy. But when you have that weight on you, Kevin Durant, you need to get that. Then you're able to muscle the smaller guy. 
And yeah. I think that he's able to muscle the smaller point guards, even though that smaller point guard has a better shot or 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 have better defense or whatever it is. I just think that for right now, he's a really, really good player, but I got to give him a few more years just because he had that benefit of playing um, professionally, something that Trey Young and these other young players didn't have. Yeah, I mean, he he definitely has an advantage uh, playing overseas in a professional league. But to me, I feel like he has the more, the higher upside. I feel like he can develop into a better player than what Trey Young is right now. Me too. Because I feel like Trey Young is pretty much going to be this guy. For the rest of his career, I feel he's going to be this, you know, small guy. He he's going to get into the paint. He's going to, you know, cause disruption. He's going to shoot a three. He's going to, you know, he's pretty much that guy. He's not going to give you much defense. He's not going to give you much rebounding. I feel like Luca can develop into a better player long term because yeah. he can post you up. He has that three pointer. It's not as good as Trey Young's, obviously. But he can develop to be a better three-point shooter. I feel sometimes Luca too. He is he moves too fast, like like Hero does. <laughs> you know, he just moves like way too fast. He feels like it has to be hero ball for him. And I think he would benefit for for some better players or some more of a Supporter I guess cast. More, more of a, an alpha dog type of guy on like the jimmy team. jimmy jimmy yeah, like if he had a jimmy next to him he would be a better overall player because he needs someone to really kind of put him in his place i guess and other news this week is that Carlisle. their coach rick carlisle decided to step down as coach now he's been a long time dallas maverick coach he's, he's been the coach ever since the heat went to the finals the first time he yeah, was he the coach the in, in 06 and uh, yeah, he won a championship with Dirk in 2011. So he decided to step down this week. I believe it's because of Luca. There, there's some kind of rift going on with Luca, and then Mark Cuban as well, the owner of the team, probably was probably getting into Rick Carlisle maybe a little too much to his liking, especially since he's got this championship pedigree. He's been here for this long time. And I think Mark Cuban probably said something to Rick Carlisle that he didn't like. And it was probably more in favor of Luca. And I think Luca ultimately is the reason why Rick Carlisle is not the coach at Dallas right now. Because, like I said, Luca moves too fast sometimes. He doesn't really kind of let stuff develop. He feels like he's the best player, which he is, on that team. And he has to do everything, which... Yeah, you're the best player on the team, but you got to be more like Chris Paul, where you are the best player on the team for the Phoenix Phoenix Suns, but you got to know how to make other players be better. And that's not what he's doing. He is like, okay, well, these players ain't good enough. I got to put everything on my back. And I think that's the maturity level that I think Trey Young already has now that Luka doesn't have. So that basically goes back to what I was saying. You have this extra experience, at least like four or five years playing professionally, and you're clearly saying that you think Trey Young has a better grasp on that aspect to the game, Leave, leaving me saying that that's the reason why I feel like that Trey Young is better. Only reason that most people say Luka is better is because mm. you're bigger. Because if you gave... Oh, yeah, Germany just scored, tied. Portugal and Germany tied 1-1 or 1-0, 34 and 31 seconds in the first half of the um, Group F, UFA, Euro Cup. That was nice. So, so <laughs> yeah, definitely, like, um, I really feel like Luka is a great player, but they give him the accolades because he's a little bigger than the average point guard he's like he does the same thing that all these point guards does the only thing is he's a little bigger imagine yeah. ben simmons this big guy had a consistent shot like luca or has mm -hmm. some type 
nobody would be talking about Luca. You know, everybody's trying to find the next great white hope, the next Larry Bird, the next, you know, it is what it is. Same thing like what I was saying with Tyler Hero and Kendrick Nunn. I really think that Kendrick Nunn has a better overall game, defense, and everything. You may say Tyler Hero have a better shot and better certain things also, which is true. But I say overall game, I would say, you know, um, you know, none. Now, going back to Trey Young and Luka, you have Luka that has great games. And like you say, he'd be playing hero ball because, of course, you know, he has not that much around him. He has Tim Hardaway Jr. He has Porzingis. Porzingis is a big guy that can shoot, but he's built like KD. He's skinny as hell, so he can't yeah. bump. And and, 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 and and have a little scuffle um, in, in the paint the way he normally would have. So going back to the question, I really do feel like I would really – because, again, starting the team, I'm looking at the Miami Heat. That's my team. Yes, I would have Trey Young on the team with Jimmy Butler. I'll have Kendrick Nunn at his backup. Dragic, you're probably not on the team no more. That's just one of the, the the things that we have to let go. Yeah. And I think that he would be a better fit for Miami just because Jimmy Butler's normally facilitates and we can have two people facilitating like that. Somebody has to be, have that consistent shot. Right. Jimmy don't have that consistent shot. Trey Young have that tr- consistent shot and and Luka doesn't have that consistent shot. He scores he does his thing, but I don't think he's as consistent as Trey Young. So yeah, yeah, I feel you. That's just my. Uh, my what what my other NBA topics do we that. have, if any? NBA uh, topics. Vernon Maxwell. You know, you, you, y'all, you guys see Vernon Maxwell's tweets? He was, he's going off on Utah. Yeah. Look, that what, they, what's what's some of the tweets that he actually that said? Crazy, I mean, man. I, mean, I, like, I, I, I sent it to y'all. So, so yeah, yeah, let, let oh. read some of these tweets because these tweets are just crazy, Hilarious, man. Like, matter of fact. Vernon Maxwell, uh, former NBA player. I believe he played for the Houston Rockets and won a championship with them and then also went on to play for the Utah Jazz. First one he got was best record in the league, blowing a 24-5 point lead. I feel for you, Utah. And to help ease the pain, I'm offering Vernon Maxwell jerseys to all residents all at half off, you are welcome. <laughs> he goes on to say, my heart goes out to the Utah players, especially Donovan Mitchell, who is a class act, one of the few guys who makes his shoes affordable, who deserve to be in a better place. Houston, Charlotte, Philly, Zimbabwe, <laughs> hell, <laughs> even OKC. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and then he said, don't fret, Utah. I'm still coming to do the summer basketball camp for you guys. And in addition, I'll also be providing remedial classes for jazz season ticket holders. Damn. Yo. Okay. Bernard Maxwell just going in. He's going more. I feel like everyone just won a championship. Changing my bio to read three-time champion bottles on me tonight. And then he continues on saying, I'd like to apologize, um, jazz fans, that were offended by my tweets i knew you guys had internet in utah i would have i would have made those tweets i wouldn't have made those tweets so basically he's saying if he knew Germany. that they had internet in utah uh, basically Ongo. the bearing place of the nba just like new orleans just like cleveland he wouldn't have made those tweets because he definitely didn't think you guys <laughs> would actually have read it now so here's the reason i'm in utah i decided to offer a free clinic to the best young shooters in the state as a truce to try and mend my relationship with Utah fans. Here are the best shooters the state had to offer. And you if you seen the actual um if you seen the actual video, you would be done because it seemed like someone that is like don't know how to play basketball that's doing his thing and trying to um, make a shot. And lastly he says this is the most this controversial the one. one that this, he this actually the one stated. He says, great game last night by the Jazz. It makes a hell of a difference when the home team isn't afraid for their lives because their fans opt not to wear white seats to the game. Wow. So, obviously saying that people in Utah are racist. Woo. 
you know, which I I believe there's a lot of racist, a lot of, a lot of racism validity. everywhere in the country. Like every city, there's gonna be some. Kind this of, is a little bit more in certain places, right? Definitely a little bit more in certain places. In Utah, I think is definitely one of them, just because the majority of the people who live in Utah are white. And not just that, you know, other places we have Boston. We also have uh, um, certain places in Texas. We also have certain places in our great sunshine state, northern Florida, from yeah. Orlando on up, you know, Orange County. You know, of course, we, we feel a little bit in Miami, but not too much. But, again, it's everywhere. I do think that he's a little um, Kwame Brown right now, stating his facts, stating his – his um problems with that organization or with that fan base and I, I i really don't have no problem with it i really feel like i love it I, I love i love all of this you know this is something that needs to be stated you know these people that are racist these uh, um stadiums that's are racist you just seen in our last podcast you had fans throwing popcorn at players you seen the 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 um pa- um um battle in the palace what what um our test fans throwing drinks and, and 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 food at players and they feel like they can't get touched or they feeling or if you can't get touched oh i'm gonna go ahead and tweet your name i'm gonna tweet your full everything about you and then i'll make the public just give you the business going back to that fan base that fan base i really do really feel like is racist i have no no um no um information on it i'm just going on a gut feeling and i'm gonna trust my fellow brother in what he's saying because if marcus just told me that he went to walmart and there was racist to him then you think i'm gonna think marcus is lying to me no i'm gonna feel marcus i'm gonna be like damn that's crazy you know uh, you know that's messed up that it happened to you but i'm not gonna question it so when it yeah. comes down to certain people that looks like me you know and, and, and suffer from the same injustices that someone like myself may still be suffering right now in today's world in the United States or anyone anywhere else in the world. I really do genuinely want to believe them and I'm going to believe them until they prove me wrong. So so um, it's crazy. I'm happy that he said it just like Marcus. But hey, it is what it is. You expect certain things from certain um stadiums from for, um, certain people and from certain states let me uh let me actually uh since we're talking about fans and we're also watching soccer we're gonna talk about what the what happened with the haiti soccer team but before yeah. that i don't know if you heard that um the mexico soccer fans were banned for the first two games oh, yeah. of the fifa Why? because uh well first of all right we are a lot of us know soccer a lot of times they they say some racist shit or yeah, like they'll, they'll throw fucking like banana peels and shit like that on yeah, the field we know that. now in mexico i guess they were banned for more of a, a homophobic slur like they were i guess the the fans were ch- uh, chanting puto or, or puta which in spanish just it means bitch but for certain uh certain countries mexico or other countries it's almost like you're calling a gay dude like the F word type of thing. You know what I mean? Gotcha. So they they took it as, oh, these these fans are chanting a homophobic slur. So they banned all the fans. So Mexico, the first two games. All the for, fans? Yeah. So Mexico for the first two games, I think for FIFA, I think, I don't know if it's the World Cup, but the first two games, they got to play without their fans. Yeah. I think it's the World Cup uh, qualifying game. Qualify, yeah. yeah. That's exactly. crazy. Yeah. Well, which. I mean, I think fans cross the line, yeah. man. Fans cross the line all I the do time, too. especially Mexican fans, though. Ooh. Like for real. Like, if you've seen, like, they played USA the other day in, uh, you know, one of these tournament games, and it was in Denver, so it wasn't even in Mexico. But there's a bunch of Mexicans, a lot of Mexicans in Denver, as, as you already know. Okay. Uh, especially like on, on the west coast or the west part of the um, country. Okay. Um. So they throw things, bro. Like, they'll throw, like, beer. They'll throw bottles at players. Like. Nothing happens to them? Nothing happens to them. I'll be fucking like, somebody Because up. they've been doing this for years. Like, as, for as long as I can remember watching Mexico soccer, the national team especially, they will throw stuff at the opposing players. 
and it's been happening for years. And I'm finally, it took a homophobic slur for y'all to really kind of do something about this because here in the United States, the dude who threw a bottle at Kyrie got a felony charge, you know, for throwing a bottle, you know, one person. And this is usually the entire crowd or the majority of the crowd is throwing like beer bottles, like glass bottles sometimes, you know, like. Did it ever hit anybody? Yeah, it hits it hits people sometimes. It hit a player last the, against the United States a couple of, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it was the same night as the Mayweather fight that was going on. It was that night. I was like, yo, this is crazy. So uh, the fact that it took a homophobic slur for them to actually do something about it is a little late. You know, um, the whole, you know, as far as I know, we're growing up in Miami that Punta meant bitch. Yeah. You yeah. know, I didn't think that was like a homophobic uh, ty- type of slur. But um, if, if that's what it takes for to try to get these fans under control because it's cool like to to heckle to boo you know but i think when it goes to homophobic racist or talking about somebody's family those are the three lines you don't cross you could say whatever else you want and you can't throw nothing there's no reason for you to be throwing stuff at a player these are people these are real people and that's the reason why the malice in the palace happened because somebody threw a beer uh, cup at Ron Artest. And Ron Artest, being the OG that he is, <laughs> <Whooped> was, <his> <laughs> ass. <laughs> went up in the stage stands, found him. Hitting everybody. And, you know, just molly whopped the dude. And then a lot of other players actually came to his defense. Like, I would have um, done the same thing. Steven Jackson also came to his defense or whatever. And uh, Jermaine O'Neal also was, was there hitting fans because they, it was just crazy. What happened to them fans, though? They didn't get arrested or just the, the players was reprimanded? I think the, play, the, the fans did get arrested, but the players the ones that received jumped on the more. Court. Yeah, I actually yeah. heard that Ron Artest is actually friends with the dude that, um, it's crazy, he's friends with the dude that actually threw the beer at him. You lying. <laughs> yeah, he's friends with this dude right now. I heard this on the, on the radio like a week ago. Because you know Ron Artest crazy. Yeah, yeah he yeah, is Ron crazy, Artes. but they, they're friends. He was like, yeah, I talk to him like every week. Yeah, like they're friends like that. That's hilarious. Which is crazy. This dude that basically kind of tarnished your career because he lost his endorsement deals because of this. So the players obviously lost a lot more than this fan. A fan probably got maybe a maybe a battery charge or an assault charge or something like that. And I don't even think it was a, like a felony. I think it might have been a misdemeanor charge. That's crazy. So, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad like FIFA actually did something about Mexico in particular because they are notorious for hitting people with bottles on the field. See, but what about that, that, that Canadian player, that the, the, the spy, <laughs> that's what I'm going to call him, <laughs> the spy that caused Haiti – the 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 um world cup entry or yeah, what you yeah. say um that that actually just the qualifying um event he wind up his teammate wind up kicking him the ball you know so he could reset and do what they normally do and he just let the shit just slide in yeah yeah to you me you know like it's one of the worst plays i've ever seen in, in soccer like to be honest i've been watching soccer for for a little minute you know i've been watching it pretty consistently for maybe the past seven years okay. but i used to watch the world cup when i was legit okay you know, with my old you know girl and my old boy um but i've never seen anything like that bro like literally the ball it felt like it was happening in slow motion first of all and then it was it was halftime too it was the, like the first play after halftime it was zero zero going into the second half so they still had a chance to win the game obviously and and who were they playing, Canada? They were playing Canada in Canada. And where's the guy from again? And the guy, the goalkeeper, who let the ball just roll past him, or he tried to kick it away. He kind of kicked it away from himself, which was just – it's its one of the worst bloopers <laughs> of all time when it comes to soccer. I was truly embarrassed being Haitian, seeing that. I'm just like, damn, this is just like the Olympics. Remember the Olympics like last time where there was a Haitian uh, hurdler? And he like, he 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 didn't hurdle the first hurdle. Oh nice! Yeah, yeah he tripped up and he he missed like the first hurdle. And he was like, he was all sad on the ground, 
but like that first hurdle and he was like a meme for like a few weeks so that's it's, it's almost like the exact same thing it's just embarrassing <laughs> for haitians it's almost it's almost makes it seem like haitians ain't good at sports which is not true you know there's a lot of great you know haitian players who have played all sports was he even haitian or was he canadian i heard that he's canadian you so know? why are you even playing for the Haitian team? Maybe because you speak French. He probably couldn't make the Canadian team, and he probably may had it, had dual citizenship between Haiti and Canada. Some so you kind of have the cho- when you have dual citizenship, you have the choice to play which which whatever team you want to play for. So he probably was like, okay, I'm gonna play for Haiti because I can make the team. So the fact that he's Canadian and he let this happen, I feel like it's an absolute conspiracy. It only makes sense to me is that the reason why he let it go. And then after that happened, you could tell, like, if, if you got a goalkeeper that did something like that, you think you're going to trust him? Hell no. Nah. I would have whipped his all. ass when we, after the damn I'm game. I'm pretty sure his – I mean, I if he beat that went back to Haiti, I'm sure – they're threatening his life. I'm sure. You know, or, putting you some know. voodoo on him, <laughs> doing something. Colombia, when that guy scored the wrong goal in, in right. the World Cup, and he died. Yeah, they, they killed, killed him when, right when he got back. You heard about that, right? No. There's a documentary on this. There was a. Uh, this was against the USA. Colombia was playing against the USA, and this was when Colombia was pretty good, yes, pretty sir. decent. And you, USA is pretty much what they are. What year you think? Average. What year? Nineties. It was in the nineties. Oh, this was early nineties. Yeah. Escobar was still out here. They actually the documentary is called The Two Escobars because the guy from the other from Colombia's team, his last name was Escobar too. He had no relation to him. But but this was during heavy narco influence. Yeah, it was. Man, what you it's think a really was gonna good, happen? It's a really good documentary. <laughs> and what he it's did was he scored the goal into the wrong goal, which went the point goes how, to the how other that team. How did even happen? Was it like it what happens. happened in Miami, or he just didn't know that it was? This, it happened in this game right now. Yeah. You'll you'll see a play where if you kick it towards the goal and you're a defender, and if it bounces off of you and it goes into the goal, nah. But that's what happened. That's basically well, he his the, was the play when you look at it, it looked like he actually kicked the ball into so the goal. I, I'm so so it looked worse. It didn't look like he. So what you think was gonna happen? And you got. Pablo Escobar betting on this on this game. Well, like, exactly. As soon, like, yeah, come soon, on, as, soon man. as he touched yeah. down, he, so, yeah, he got killed. Yeah, they found him at a bar, and then they murked him straight up. Not, not condoning this, but Haiti, we call it new, 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 fair voodoo. Do your thing. Do your thing. Yeah, so, yeah. So, 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 hey, it is what it is, man. Hopefully nothing happens to him, but. You know, um, things can happen to you in the spiritual world, you know, and, and that's not what we're saying here at the Marks West Sports Podcast. But, hey, if it happened, then it's probably going to be another documentary. I'll watch that one. Yeah, yeah, it probably will be. <laughs> another 30 for 30. So um, any other topics that we want to jump into right now? A report or anything like that. I mean, if you want to talk Miami Hurricanes, uh, the Hurricanes do got the Paradise Camp coming up this weekend. Okay. And that's basically where former players, former legends come and, you know, they, they talk to all the, the recruits that are in the area and mm-hmm. they hold a camp. Mm-hmm. It's usually they get about two or three recruits or, or commitments after this happens. Okay. I'll, I'll be there. Uh, you know, reporting, oh, doing, doing videos uh, next Saturday. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what time it is. So I, I have to get back to you on that to see if we're actually going to be able to do a podcast next Saturday. It's all good. But, um, but yeah, that that's that's something to look forward to. They did get a commitment this week, Quan Lee, a three-star was receiver, who is pretty good. I don't know too much about him because he's from Gainesville, um, Gainesville, Florida. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we did get him as a commitment. The commitments are slowly coming in, you know. I uh, heard we went, we closed our, you know, recruiting for, I guess, 2021. I guess everybody that we wanted to recruit, we kind of. For 21? Yeah. 21 or 22? 21 has been, uh, closed. Uh, this is really for 22. Okay, so for 22. for the next, uh, they'll be officially signing, like, next February. Okay, that's what's up. Um, but yeah, like from what I hear, uh, like I said last time, Shamar Stewart is trending in the right direction, and Jacoby Spells, who is a uh, cornerback, is also trending in the right direction. You still got Wesley Bassain, 
those are really kind of the big names uh, so far. Um, but it's been slow right now. It's it's really uncharacteristically slow. I believe they only have three commits right okay. now. Uh, usually you would have more, but but it's really because of COVID. They wanted to wait until they got the kids on campus before they started to officially offer these kids. But I would imagine just like every season before that they're going to offer a lot of kids during this Paradise Camp. Oh, yeah, because a lot of players come out to it from all over the state, you know, come because they're like, oh, okay, I get to work with, you know, Clinton Portis Ed or Reed. Frank Gore or Ed Reed, you know, these type of players. The, they, they come out for that. And it, it's it's much expected that you're going to get some offers that will be happening within the next couple of weeks. I mean, that's that's really all uh, to say about the Hurricanes this week uh, as far as news is concerned. Uh, we all know we got the game with Alabama, game one in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Uh, they did sign a, a home-and-home home series with Auburn. That's way in the future. So I think we'll that's a 27. Yeah, that's way in the future. I think it's 27 and 30. Um, can't believe it's like – the 2021 years. like <laughs> you know like and then we're talking about 2030 like Damn. crazy i feel like we should be flying in 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 cars right now that's that's how i felt like when i was a jit didn't you think you was gonna be like in flying cars right now yeah, yeah that too you know but i, I seen some so uh yeah, little by little things, starting you know? to get there because again you see you see the hoverboard you see the the there's a car that i seen that can, can be on land and also go on water yeah. you know we see the 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 actual drones now we got camera phones that i can actually speak to you and see you like the jetsons yeah. so so you know slowly for surely things are Tesla's actually that yeah drive themselves exactly you know yeah so, Tesla's right. that could drive so themselves like, little by little like it started to happen you know? exactly yeah. so so you know um our, our our kids will definitely um benefit from this you know, by that time, you know, uh, I think a kid would be like maybe like seven or eight, go to a few games, you know. <laughs> and, 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 hey, it is what it is. You know, for us, you know, I'm going to go ahead and take everything um, with a grain of salt, you know, when it comes to to vaccines, when it comes to UFO sightings. We got our, our, our Congress and senators talking about UFOs and certain things that if you spoke on years ago, they would have been like, you crazy as hell. What the yeah, hell are you talking about, Wes? So, again, a lot of these things are coming out. Hopefully, if aliens are real, or they're mates. not trying to kill us. They're trying yeah. to be friendly and friends. Hopefully. Give us technology to to better ourselves as a um, people. You know, we're going through global warming, it seems like, right now. Because the West is dry. And over here, it seems like there's raining. it's raining every day. And it's still hot as hell outside, even though it's raining. So, again, it is what it is. Um, I do appreciate all that. I'm pretty sure Chris and everybody else, we, you know, and everybody as human beings, we're appreciating all these new ventures that's happening, all these new realities that's happening, all these changes that's happening right now. Again, like we said it in the beginning, is Juneteenth, you know, so people are really um, seeing what, what we have been going through as minorities, as black people. You got the 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 LGBTQ that's you know fighting for their rights. You got the women that's fighting for their rights. You got black people that's still fighting for their rights. You got the Chinese people that's suffering from abuse right now still yeah. because of what happened through the COVID. So uh, again, every day is going to be a different day. You're going to take that with a grain of salt. You're going to learn from that. You're going to learn from the Mark West Sport podcast. You're going to learn from the news. You're going to learn from just being a regular human, just living. So so um, for us, it's just like take it one day at a time don't get overwhelmed and, and keep an open mind to everything politics yeah, yeah. stuff in general and, and um don't be gullible to anything that you hear out here yeah any any fight talk fights uh, i know no, tio really lopez's any. fight got canceled yeah, by the he, way yeah he got covid because of covid situation he was supposed to fight down here i thought right yeah hard rock i think yeah. no not a hard rock somewhere else but down here in miami yeah somewhere jamal down here. charlo or jamal I think it's Jermel. Oh, it was at Marlins Park. It was at Marlins Park. I think he's fighting. It was at Marlins. I thought yeah, it was, it was back supposed at... to be at Marlins Park. I'm I'm seeing a big rise on on people fighting outside. I know, right? Because yeah, we're open. Oh, okay. Oh, you know, <laughs> little by little, Las Vegas is gonna open. Things are little, little by little, starting to get back to normal. So, you know, what I mean, New York is open. California is open. You know, what I mean, but you don't you wouldn't. 
you would like because me when I think about a fight outside, I think about George Foreman and um, a Muhammad Ali in Africa. Yeah, Rum- rumble the, the rumble jungle. in the jungle. So it's not a rumble in the jungle, but it's just like being a boxer, being a you know whoever is outside in that weather, that element. But you you see the the fucking uh, the Logan Paul Floyd Mayweather shit almost got rained out. Ex- that's what I'm saying. Right. So you can't know it, especially down here. You see how the weather is like where it's sunny, and then next thing you know, we have a whole week of just rain like crazy. Like yeah, especially that's, in the that's summer. why. Yeah, that's that's one of the reasons why I think Hard Rock put that thing on top because. I think the Super Bowl that they had here, it almost got rained out. The rain was crazy, yeah. and it was horrible. So they said they would, they wasn't gonna give Miami or places that don't have like right. something covered. Like a canopy. They yeah. wasn't gonna give them uh, yeah, the, 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 the pay, Super Bowl no the more. The Peyton Manning uh, Super Bowl was rained out. The one yeah. with the co- Colts yeah. against the Bears. That exactly. So was rained out. But I really do think that the, the Miami Dolphins, they they was planning on having a retractable roof like the Marlins Stadium. Are they still planning on doing that, or is know. that like out? I think no. I think, I think it's out. just what they have is that like canopy, which is still if it rains, it, it just it covers it wets, the fans. It wets, it, yeah, most of the fans. Not it even covers all. the fans, but the the field that's just getting wet. You know what I mean? So, yeah. hey, it is what it is. Again, like we said, take it with a grain of salt. Everything's gonna be different every day. So, um, that's just one of the things that Tua you need to learn from playing in that hurricane and that tornado that was the other day that got you five interceptions and stuff like that. Yeah. That's just Miami. Those 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 different events that want to um, have events in Miami, uh, if you're a boxing guy, you, you want to go into the AAA. I don't know the new name right now. It's always going to be the AAA for me, same like FTX? the Dolphin Stadium. I think it's called FTX. I don't know what the hell. The AAA. And then yeah. you got Hard Rock Stadium. At least Hard Rock Stadium is easier to remember. Yeah, it has a nice – you name know. to it nice ring so to it. i'll remember that but hey it is what it is we're gonna go ahead and close this yeah. out and this will close be the out. end shout out to nate diaz who battled but lost and adesanya like we said whoop, whooped him up easy Why you know not? so he's still the champion so uh, but yeah that's gonna wrap it up and that's gonna conclude the mark westport podcast peace. until next week peace